coming to you from the city beautiful Chicago, Illinois, where tonight Comcast Sportsnet presents White Sox Baseball is Jose Abreu, Alexi Ramirez, Avi Garcia and our Sox as they get set to butt heads with Billy Butler, Eric Hosmer, Alex Gordon, and the Kansas City Royals. Hi, everybody, and welcome. With Steve Stone, I'm Ken Harrell, since we get set to bring you the first of this final four game of the season. This will be a four-game set. Kansas City has a chance to clinch a combination of two. But as you know, we're coming off that nine-game road trip where we were four and five. We started in Kansas City, then went to St. Pete and finished up yesterday in Detroit. Chris Sale was just awesome. Six innings, one run, ten strikeouts. But tonight, Royals, big game for them, and they looked a big game, James Shields. It is a huge game for the Royals because they can get one step closer to going to postseason play for the first time since 1985. As you can see, a dead tie with Oakland. Seattle won today, so their faint hopes still alive. But the road for them is really difficult, and that's what it looks like in the best race in the major leagues right now. And James Shields is the man they look to. Big game James, he's called that for a reason, is because he's awfully good when the pressure is on, and he's going to have to be. This year, 1-1, one and one, the ERA 267 in four starts against our Sox. We had a very good chance of beating him in Kansas City. It didn't work out that way, although we did take a 3 to nothing lead against him, and he wound up getting a no decision. So Shields is the guy they look to. They're probably going to be able to clinch it in this series, just not tonight, and hopefully not tomorrow night or the night after. Well, we all know that Jose Quintana has pitched much, much better than his record indicates, so we'll watch him tonight against Big Game James Shields. Sit back, relax, and strap it down. White Sox baseball coming your way.
is brought to you in part by your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, through it all. AT&T U-verse. Find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT. Mobilizing your world. And by Ford. Check out America's Precious Lena at your local Ford store or at localfordstores.com. Welcome back to beautiful U.S. Cellular Field on a great night for baseball. 71 degrees and the last homestand of the year. A four-game series with Kansas City, meaning a whole lot to Kansas City and not much to the Sox. But there's the head-to-head. The Royals have dominated this year. You can see why. Look at the batting average and the amount of runs they've scored. They don't hit the ball out of the ballpark, yet they lead in that department. They lead baseball in stolen bases, so that's no surprise. And ERA is outstanding. No wonder they're playing 667 baseball against the Sox this year as Paul Canerco in what will be his final four here at U.S. Cellular Field. They had a tribute to him on the scoreboard, the fans giving him an ovation as the White Sox take the field. Let's take a look at how Ned Yost is going to line up his Kansas City Royals tonight. El Cities Escobar leading it off with Norioki, who had a series for the ages against us in Kansas City. Then it's Lorenzo Cain, Eric Cosner, Billy Butler, who this year against the Sox has been very good, but lately he's been really turning it on. He's coming alive at a great time for Kansas City as they get ready for the playoffs with a combination of one more win and loss as far as Seattle is concerned. Alex Gordon, Salvador Perez, Omar Infante, and Mike Moustakas round it out. The defense and how they'll line up. Leon Jose Quintana, Jordan Danks, Adam Eaton, and Abasilio Garcia in the outfield. With Connor Gillespie, Alexei Ramirez, Marcus Simeon, and Jose Abreu in the infield. Josh Fegley gets a nod behind the plate. And our Lexus Pursuing Perfection starting pitcher is Jose Quintana. Looking to even it up at 10 and 10, his ERA of just a very solid 322. 171 strikeouts, just 52 walks and 193 innings. He's had a terrific year overall, but once again, a lot of no decisions. The umpires, Chris Conroy behind the plate. Rob Drake is at first. Alfonso Marquez is at second. And Ted Barrett is at third. So Robin, talking yesterday to the press, said that he can't see any need for any changes to the coaching staff and hopefully they will be back except the only caveat to that is if one or two of them might get a managerial job then Robin would be the happiest man in the world if he can send them off to a better job and a lifelong dream for a whole lot of these coaches. Ned Yost trying to put his team into the playoffs for the first time since 1985 they're awfully close there you look at the overall record his fifth year as a Royals manager, both under 500, but he's got a very good team this year. And it looks like they're going to make it, and they have their fate in their own hands, which is all you can ask for with four left in the season. So we're ready to play baseball, and I'm ready to turn it over to my play-by-play -play partner, Ken Harrelson. All right, Steve, thank you, and once again, good evening, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to White Sox Baseball right here on Comcast Sportsnet. So happy you could join us for the first of the final four. Alcides Escobar will lead it off against our 25 year old Southpaw Jose Quintana. And the first pitch of the ball game. Taken for a strike. Alcides comes in hitting at 282 with three homers, 50 knocked in. He has 33 doubles, five triples, and 31 stolen bases. He is a good shortstop as well. Alfield slightly to the right. Royals come in hitting at 262 as a club with a 3.51 ERA. They are 44 and 33 on the road and just 42 and 39 at home. One and two the count. And they have had a pretty easy time of it against us this year. This is the 16th meeting in the first 15. They've won 10 of them.
Escobar, seven for 27 lifetime off Quintana. So that's a top foul. And here at Higher Park, 330 down the left field line, 335 down the right field line, 375 in the gaps, and 400 straight away center. Although the left hander on the mound, it can slow down Kansas City's running game. There are very few people who can stop it entirely, and this team will try to run you out of the ballpark if they get a chance. Foul tipped hung on two. He gone. One out. Good way to start it for Jose. That's a strike one way or the other, but it tips off the bat. And now you don't have to worry about that speed burn. So here is Aoki hitting at 283. A homer he's driven in 41, 17 for 24 in stolen bases. Pitches inside. In that series in Kansas City, he was four for four in game one, four for five in game two. Is that's a can of corn. And in the third game, he was three for four. And got on base a total of 13 times with those 11 hits. Absolutely an amazing series. What you'd love to see him do is more of that hit the ball in the air. He truly had the magic wand. <laughs> that was that was just a series for the ages. I'm not sure if he's ever going to see one of those again. And we're not going to see one anytime soon. Mm -mm. Well, nobody in Kansas City has ever seen that at nope. home. As here is Lorenzo Kane, seven for 28 lifetime off Quintana. Comes in hitting at 299, five homers, and he's driven in 50. And he has 27 stolen bases and 32 attempts. They have 150 stolen bases and 185 times. Bit of a gap out there in right center. And the count moves to two and one. First baseman Eric Hosmer on deck. That ball hit hard in the center field. He gets a good jump back there. Can't make the play. So that'll be a double. That's his 28th two back. For Kane, that's the difference with a three run count or a two two count. 3 1, you can just look for a fastball. That was on the outer third, and he drills it. Hits at the bottom of the fence and keeps it alive for Hosmer. Hosmer, 273, eight homers. He's knocked in 56. He has not had a real good go at Quintana. 28 at bats, three hits, all of which have stayed in the park. Breaking ball, no chance. Lexi's playing up the middle. There's a huge gap on the left side. And Hosmer on occasion will go that way, especially against a left hander. Pitch is low. Got evens at one. Billy Butler 
Starting to swing the bat, he's on deck. Close pitch, didn't get it. He just as soon ended here with Hosmer. That because Billy Butler really has been hitting the ball well lately. Hasn't had a good year. It's been tough for him, but you get hot late. Get in the playoffs and help your ball club. A whole lot of this season can be forgotten. And there's a base hit. And it's going to be a one nothing Kansas City lead. RBI number 57 as he takes it pretty much right back up the middle. You get a fastball right down the middle. There's Butler at 269, nine homers, 64 knocked in. We told you he was hot in the last six, 381, and he's driven in five. And that ball hit hard, backhanded, nice pick. Nice peg. And that'll do it, but the two out double, then the single by Hosmer. And after happening at play, it's Royals one and the good guys coming to back with Alexia Ramirez in the two spot, then Jose Abreu, Connor Gillespie, Abasail Garcia, Jordan Dink, Dan Viciato, Josh Pegley behind the plate, and Marcus Simeon, who lately is swinging the bat well, especially in the clutch. The defense and how they'll line up behind James Shields. It's Gordon Kane and Aoki in the outfield, with Moustakas, Escobar, and Fonte and Hosmer in the infield. Salvador Perez, once again behind the plate, and our Lexus Pursuing Perfection starting pitcher is James Shields. On for his 34th start. He's gone 221 innings, about 22 home runs, and he will be around the plate with most everything, and that power change is probably his best pitch. And before we show you our picks to click, you at home, select yours. That's a good look. No, that's, that's a great look. Nice uni. Great look right there. Here's Adam. Adam at 297, a homer. He's driven in 35. 32 year old veteran's first pitch misses. Soskin hitting at 253 as a team with a 4.29 ERA. 
Fox, 39 and 38 at home. Two and oh the count. Oh, those flat caps. I never lie. It's halfway to St. Patrick's Day. That is a nice looking cap. And there is a strike. Pretty good numbers against James Shields. You don't find a whole lot of guys with that much success. Down even at two. This backdoor slider and what Shields can do is throw that on both sides of the plate, which makes him even more effective. And once again, he is seeing a lot of pitches. Payoff. And that's in the center field to his counterpart. A nice counterpart. So here's Alexei at 276, 15 homers, 72 driven in. Alexei also some real good success. 23 for 55 with a couple of homers. Softly hit three hopper. Two down. And right now, let's check out our picks to click. Demand Joe, our director of cool, along with Ivy, Steve's going to Connor Gillespie. And my picks tonight are two guys working my almost 40 years of broadcasting now. There are a lot of producers. Some good ones, some not so good. These two are the best I ever worked with. They do a great job. Mike Leary, Dave Ross. So here is a Bayou. And that's in the hole. So the two out single. Pass the diving Mike Moustakis. Picked on the first ball fastball. James Shields since the start of the 2011 season. Second in all of baseball in innings pitched. So he takes the baseball. He goes to the mound. Good or bad. He eats up a lot of innings. And most of them quality innings. And that has never had more value and merit than it does in today's culture of baseball. There you take a look. 284 career starts. He hasn't pitched on the greatest teams around, and he's 114 and 90. Well, they don't call him Big Game James because he was a loser. Up and Kansas City is very happy to have him. There's a certain feeling that a team has when their ace goes to the mound. And on the teams that Shields has pitched on, they have that feeling when he's out there. Well, from afar, every every where the lineups and who's pitching every day in Major League Baseball, every time he goes out there, I expect him to win. 
if they get him any runs. <laughs> Last five starts, as you can see. The ERA 175. You can hardly do much better than that. Opponents hitting 195. Of course, only a 10 to 1 strikeout to walk ratio. That's not bad. There's a strike in the count three and one. And that's popped up into short center. And that'll retire the side. It was a two out single by a break. You don't have to one it is one nothing Royal. Game brought to you by Miller Lite. And Sox fans, Fan Appreciation Day is this Sunday, September 28th, final game of the year, and all fans will receive a free ticket to a 2015 April and May home game, excluding, of course, off opening day, and one lucky fan will win the Diamond Suite. Also, hundreds of other prizes will be given away as the Sox say thank you for your support this season. So to purchase tickets, visit whitesox.com slash tickets. Alex Gordon, Salvador Perez, Omar Infante here in the top of the second. Gordon at 265, 19 homers and 73 knocked in. And those numbers might not jump out here on September 25th and, and stun you. But if you consider this ball club and you consider not what he hit, but when he hit it, he has been, for the most part, he's been the man this year. Well, you take a guy who was a leadoff hitter for a lot of years, move him into the middle of the lineup, don't give him a whole lot of protection behind him, and you place him in a very big ballpark as Kansas City is, you can understand where 19 and 73 wouldn't be all that bad for power numbers. Third ball. He gone. Yeah, but he's 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 developed into. Of course, Billy Butler. If he's if he has a good year, he's the man on this ball club. And Billy is a great clutch hitter. He has not had a real good season for him. He's starting to swing the bat now at the right time. But Alex has put himself in a in the category of being a good seventh, eighth, and ninth inning hitter. And again, one reason being obviously because it's clutch and another reason because in the seventh eighth and ninth innings in a close ball game you're going to be seeing some of the best stuff out there that, that opposition has is there is Perez two now and with Gordon there's a huge factor that you cannot underestimate and that is he's a gold glove left fielder which means that 
He's going to take away a lot of doubles down the line because of his arm and the accuracy and the strength. He's going to make them into singles. He's going to stop guys from scoring from second base on a base hit. When you have that guy in left field, it's a pretty valuable guy to have around. Here's Infante at 256, six homer, 66 knocked in. There's the strike. A nice one, two, three inning for Quintana. We trail it one nothing. Right out of the Big Apple, tune in as Rangers and Hawks duke it out in this preseason battle. It's Blackhawks Rangers tomorrow at 7.30 on Comcast Sportsnet Plus. And a little note of interest is our, he'll always be our Mark Burley. Yesterday, shuts out Seattle for eight innings, giving up three hits, no runs, one walk at 10 strikeouts. And in doing that, he became the seventh pitcher since 19 and 01 to record at least 200 innings in 14 consecutive seasons. The other six are all in the Hall of Fame. And Mark is just the second left-hander ever, ever with 200 innings plus in 14 straight seasons. Warren Spawn did it in 17 straight. In this era, with the Pensman coming in the game earlier and earlier, that's an astonishing accomplishment for Mark Burley. Well, how about this one? He has never spent one day on the Desing on the DL in his career. That's even more amazing. The L1 pitch to Avi. Breaking ball. But the one thing about Mark from the beginning, didn't matter what you paid him, you got your money's worth. Each and every year. You might time, but you're not going to beat him. He's that kind of a person. They don't come any better than Mark Burrow. And with that win yesterday, his 13th of the season, he's now 13 and 10. That's 199 career wins. And he's going to be back next year. The O2. There's 
a shot. Hosmer can pick it. One of the best in the business with 11. Osmer, as you can see, playing well off the line. And gets a rocket, but he's able to take it off the dirt and make the play. Well, there's not a better first baseman in the American League than he is. Great range, good arm. It's a heck of a ball club. I thought they should have won it last year. Well, the thing that they'll be going for him is they're most likely will get into that one and done wild card playoff. But they're going to have the man on the mound tonight ready to go for that game. Now, as I said, the reason I picked him to win the Central this year was they catch the ball. First of all, they catch the ball better than anybody in this division. The next thing is they get the best bullpen of anybody in this division. And they can run you out of the ballpark. All of them good reasons. The one reason I picked Detroit was that they had been there. And they have that one big guy in the middle. I never envisioned Victor Martinez having the kind of year he had. But you know that that one big guy in the middle which no team in the division can match is Miguel Cabrera. Well I just still don't understand how teams can. Which they do. It's it's and pitch to him and let him beat you. It's I mean, I just don't understand it. To me, it's not bad baseball. It's stupidity. That's it's clear stupidity. Is what it is. It's not bad baseball. Well, our team didn't have really a choice with first and second nobody out, but well, you pretty different. much knew that Cabrera was going to end the game. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a reason that he's made <laughs> over half a billion dollars playing this game. And he was going up and down, up and down that dugout. Yelling at his teammates to give them whatever added incentive he could give them as the leader of that ball club. And it paid off. Well, in the American League in the last 50 years, best three right handed hitters that have come in have been they hurt Frank Thomas, Manny Ramirez, and Miguel Cabrera. You might have to add a fourth only, you know, we're going to wait five, six, maybe seven years down the road for that guy in Anaheim, Mike Trout, because. I said in the American League. Yeah, the early to come into the American League, you know, and that thing, of course, Pujols is great. Trout has got a chance to be just <laughs> Mike Trout. I mean, that's, he had the speed that Trout brings to the party along with his defense. One thing he can't do is. He's a four and a half to a player. He can't throw all that well. But the rest of his game, not too many holes in that game. And I said, you got to give him some time, but maybe five years from now, he joins those big three you talked about. Well, he's got a chance to. There's no question. He's got a chance to. I mean, look at the RBIs that he's had from the position in the lineup he's been hitting in his career. And to go. Second in MVP his first year, second in MVP in his second year, and this year he's going to win it. Nobody's ever done that. That's why we talk so much about baseball is in such great position because of all the great young talent coming into this game. It's just like our socks, for an example. We're in great position to have some fun next year and the year after and the year after. We've been watching history all season long with the Brayu, and now we've got. Garcia healthy again. His airs ball for it. We got Adam Eaton out there. We've got some good young players. It's going to be fun. There's look the man that is tied for third in home runs the American League. Been a top ten in batting average as long as I can remember. Of course, Jose Altuve is having just one of those miracle years, hitting 343 coming into the night. He's sitting there in the four, four spot and runs batted in behind Trout, Cruz, and Cabrera. What a year. Longest hitting streak, longest two hitting streaks in the American League, 21 and 18. That ties it with Marquecas for the longest, second longest, rather. What a year it's been. 
On base percentage 381 for a slugger. That's real good. And slugging percentage leading the pack ahead of Trout, Victor Martinez, and Encarnacion. What a year. Cabrera's been with Detroit now seven years. But I have never seen a right handed hitter in my career better than Frank Thomas for the first eight years he played. He put up numbers that nobody has ever matched. Right handed hitters, I'm talking about. He's in that category with Mallott, Babe Ruth, and Ted Williams. Of the home runs, the RBIs, the walks, the runs scored. And he's the only right handed hitter. The other three left handed hitters. Well, that's one of the reasons why he was speaking at Cooperstown. Yep. Tanks with a 2 2 count. Tanks at 232, 21 homers, 58 knocked in. That is two down. First strikeout for Shields, and here's Fagley. Josh has faced Shields eight times, has one hit. Wow. Fourteen years and never been on the DL. That's very hard to believe. Well, a pitcher? That's hard to believe for anybody, but especially a pitcher. By the way, Burley, when he beat Seattle yesterday, won nothing. That game was an hour and 59 minutes. Without commercials, it would have been really quick. Well, I don't know who was pitching for Seattle, but they were slow. <laughs> That's the reason it lasted that long. <laughs> that ball hit deep. Way back. Gordon looks up. You can put it on the board. Yeah. A ball by Beckley. His first of the season, and it's a 2 1 Sox lead. The only number that isn't all that impressive for James Shields is home runs. And he gives up a long one. This fastball goes a mile, our Ford home run replay. And this is no doubter. All Gordon could do was look up, gave it the courtesy run, but that's over the bullpen. But Shields now has given up 23 home runs, tying him for the team lead with Guthrie. Most of the time, not all the time, you being a former pitcher, you know most of the time you see a guy gives up a lot of home runs, you're looking at a pretty good pitcher. You're looking at a guy that throws a lot of strikes, and if you don't walk people and they give up some home runs, you're usually going to keep your team in the game. In his case, you would trade those home runs for having him in your rotation every day or every fifth.
I like the way you when you were going over Simeon in the lineups. I guess one for eight off Shields. That ball hit hard, and nobody's going to get that one. That one hops the fence. Mark is now going to turn it on. And he will get there with a triple. That is his second. Three base hit. Well, Marcus knows a couple of different things. And that is once this ball gets a hit by Aoki, he knows Aoki doesn't have a strong arm. But he also realizes the cutoff man on this play is Infante, who doesn't have near the arm strength as Escobar. And so he takes a look. He's thinking three bases right here, and then he sees that Aoki not getting the ball all that quickly. And he makes it easily in the third. Well, what I was talked about earlier about seventh, eighth, and ninth inning hitters in close ball games. And when you were talking about him, you said he's been swinging about well, especially in the clutch. Oh, that's that has. I love it when you say in the clutch. Well, I mean, that's that's but, what he's been doing. Well, again, that means you're facing good pitching when you hit in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning in close ball games. Well, Robin also said about him is that loves the way he swung the bat, especially in those situations that we just talked about. But. He needs to improve with the glove. And he said right now the game is moving very fast for him. He believes he has the athletic ability and the skills to be pretty good defensively. And if he shores that up, well, he's got a chance to be a special player if he sure keeps he hitting the way he's hitting. Sure he does. And he's going to be. He's that uh, he wants it. He's got the ability. And Robin knows some experience because I want to tell you something. When Robin first joined us, he and Simeon were very similar defensively. Very similar. And Mancelino and Robin worked hard at it and worked hard at it, and Robin became a great third baseman. As he strikes that at him, but the two run homer by Josh Fegley. And we'll go to the third leading two to one. Chicago fan photo for a chance to have it shown on our broadcast later in the game brought to you by AT&T and we've got a new right fielder most of Sierra comes in the game and if we find out anything about that we will let you know unusual for a to exit quite this quickly so we'll see very unusual first pitch Strike to Mike Mustakis, hitting a 209, 15 homers, 52 knocked in.
2 3 and 0 for us, 1 2 and 0 for them. And you can grab your costumes and bring your friends and family to the ballpark tomorrow for countdown to Halloween. Now our socks are offering an exclusive ticket package, which includes a game ticket and a glow-in-the-dark White Sox trick-or-treat bag. So to purchase tickets, visit whitesocks.com slash boo. You mentioned to the young man you were talking to before the game that it wouldn't surprise you if next year Moustakas Hit 310, 320, drove in runs, and did everything that he's been supposed to do all this time. Why is that? He's got to clear out his head. If he can get that done, he's got the ability to do that. He's got the ability to hit anywhere from 280, 310, 30, 35 home runs, and knock in over 100. How do you do that? That, if I knew, I would tell him. <laughs> because he's a nice young Greek boy. And I'm a converted Greek, so we have something in common. <laughs> but I, you know what it is, Tony. You've seen it with players. You've seen it with pitchers. You've seen yeah. it with hitters. Sure. You've seen guys who muddle along, and you say to yourself, what, what is wrong with this guy? He's out dumbing himself. He came up, I mean, the talent he had in the minor leagues was outstanding. Number one draft pick. All he, the way up from Little League up. He was a guy that they thought was absolutely going to come here. Maybe some struggles at the beginning. Then he was going to start. And so far, it hasn't worked out that way. Avi left with a stiff lower back. I saw him, I think it was Avi, the other day with a back ice on his back. Hopefully, everything's okay. That a boy, take your time, man. Rack them up. That's the 167th double play turn by our Sox. That was number one in the major leagues. Escobar doesn't ground into double plays easily. That's just the 12th time. 565 at bats, and they get him by a half step. Yeah, Mustakis. If he gets his head cleared up, one of the, you know one of the greatest things that that I've heard recently was on the David Faraday show which I think to me is the best best golf show on TV he's also one of the great interviewers forget golf one of the great interviewers in the country in anything well it's he's made a believer out of me whatever. because he's turned a couple of guys I didn't know him but I wouldn't I didn't particularly care for him one being Sergio Garcia I never cared for him after I saw that hour with I love Sergio and I still never met him but the thing is, is that he had Butch Harmon and a guy who I played some golf with and just loved, Lee Trevino, they were on his show. And they were talking about Tiger. And Faraday asked Butch, what's Tiger got to do to get back to his game? Has he got to get a new coach? Has he got, Butch says, absolutely not. He doesn't need any more coaching. The only thing he needs is to get a couple buckets of balls, go to the back of the range, and start hitting some shots. That's one way of getting your head clear. That's popped up by Aoki. And another nice inning. Park in town.
picks in the American and National League. Only one thing I changed, and that was the Cy Young Award winner. And the reason is that Chris Sale is going to win the earned run average title. Plus, his last start against a team that was really bearing down against him was Detroit. And he threw exceptionally well, gave him just one run. Felix, who everybody thinks is going to win it, Felix Hernandez, gotten hit pretty hard in two of the last three starts, and his ERA is 234, John Lester, 246. As far as the National League, Clayton Kershaw, nobody really jumps out at you for MVP. I pick him for both. Buck Showalter, Matt Williams, my managers, Dan Duquette, Mike Rizzo, Jose Abreu running away with Rookie of the Year, Billy Hamilton for the Reds. It's going to be close, but he'll probably win it. And rookie pitcher, again, matter of discussion, Matt Shoemaker and Jacob DeGrom. Well, we talked about that the other day, and we were talking about MVP in the National League, and that was my choice. Also, Clayton Kershaw. Yeah, I mean, because there's no other clear cut one. No, when, when nobody jumps out at you, when that one guy is doing everything to help his team, then you, that's the first time you really look at a pitcher and say, what did he mean to his ball club? And when you take a look at the Dodgers this year, you subtract Clayton Kershaw from that team and realize how many starts he missed and still was 18 over 500. That's pretty good. Well, there's a precedent set for Chris Sale also. Yeah, the precedent by King Felix. Yeah. I mean, he won it at 13 and 12 with an ERA that was outstanding. And the rest of the numbers, the whip and everything else that we talk about, outstanding that particular year. Well, this year, Chris Sale has got all those things. Well, the only thing I would do that differed from any of those would be I would do something that there's been no precedent set. I would have hope American League managers of the year. Then you'd have to put Sosha right up there, I assume. Sosha yeah. and so on. Osmer tried to get there. There's another area he's just about as good as anybody because he's got that speed. We've seen him miss one ball, which was really surprising because I think it's the only one we've seen him ever miss that in Kansas City. Yeah. Well, you you know, I saw Paul Blair drop one. That was <laughs> amazing. <laughs> you don't see much. Much of the great ones do that. No. No. You go down the list. And you know, you the great Brooks Robinson, who was just about as good as got at third base. I saw him make some arrows. You know what they were on routine plays. Routine one hoppers or two hoppers. Difficult plays he just made easy. Well, one guy in the National League that you can make a case for as the MVP is Giancarlo Stanton. Because even though he got hit in the face, lost for the rest of the year, second and runs batted in. Slugging percentage, he still leads the National League. Extra base hits, he still leads the National League. Walks, still leads the National League. Well, he's still got a definite shot at him. On base, mean, just, on know, base percentage, picks. he's second. And I mean, yeah, I, I think he's going to be given consideration for that. Osmer. Yeah, I think the others are, for the most part, slam dunks. So here is Jose. He singled in the hole. I mean, third and short, with two out in the first inning. They should have one other category in that. In those awards, is there is a ground ball. Osmond, who picked, just looks out at Escobar. And that being not the comeback player of the year, but the biggest surprise 
player of the season. Because for what J.D. Martinez has done for Detroit. I mean, they should have some sort of an award of that nature because they would have no chance of being where they're at without J.D. Martinez. And seeing as he was released and out of the major leagues until picked up, spent some time in the minor leagues before being brought back to the major leagues by Detroit, yeah, he would certainly be one of the huge surprise players, yeah. if not the number one guy in all of baseball. Yeah. Well, another guy to me would be Harrison from Pittsburgh. Who was look at the job he's done. Look at the big hits he's got. Now, my favorite thing with him this year was him getting caught in a couple of rundowns. <laughs> Remember seeing those? <laughs> As Gillespie can't get it in the count two and one. Well when you consider that he's second in the league in batting average, that's pretty good. Pretty good for a guy that wasn't all that highly thought of and came up and basically set the league on its ear. Yeah, he would be my pick in the National League. Certainly. That's deflected over towards the front. That's a hang Wolfen right there for Gillespie. Meanwhile, it'll be one, four, three if you're scoring along with us. In battle at U.S. Cellular Field. We'll kickstart the night with a special Paul Canerco ceremony celebrating his 16 years with the White Sox. Coverage starts at 5 30 with White Sox pregame live presented by Lexus of Merrillville. It's White Sox Royals Saturday at 5 30 on CSN. We're in the top of the fourth inning and a 2 1 Sox lead. Two run homer by Josh Fegley in the second. Lorenzo Kane short hop to center field fence for a double with two out in the first inning and then scored on Hosmer's single. Don't forget about Saturday Paul Canerco Day. You've been here for all of them, but it seems hard to believe that this is his 16th year in a White Sox uniform. I remember when he first joined us. I've told you this before. His first year, especially a year and a year and a half, 
I was really worried about him. <laughs> really worried about him. As there is a base hit. Gaines going to give it a go. Good throw is going to be close. Off the mark a little bit. So another double. Well, talking about Polly, here's what happened yesterday when we arrived at Atlantic Aviation. Polly getting off the field. Jim and Joe shot this, and this is what all the great folks out there, the fire trucks and everything. Polly going over to greet everybody that was there. He sprayed the plane with water. Yep. Last time coming down off a road trip for the White Sox. That's into short center field. Osman. One out. Couldn't get the job done. He just didn't wait for the pitch because that one was high and away. That first was not pitch. a good, good no, effort. No, first, first pitch. No reason to swing at that one. But he did. You know, getting back to J.D. Martinez, and, and actually, if you take. J.D. has played in 119 games, has the same amount of home runs as Cabrera. He has 76, 29 less RBIs, and Cabrera has played in 156 games. So actually, he has had. In, Again, it's when he hit it. So he actually has had probably at least as good a year as Cabrera. With, of course, Victor having the best season. If you're going to win it, and it appears at least that the Tigers are, you're going to have to have some surprises. You're going to have to have career years out of a few people and some absolute surprises that you could never see coming out of spring training. Well, the one thing that was a constant with them was the bad bullpen all year. <laughs> they did have that. And then when Dave Dombrowski tried to shore it up with Soria, brought him over, and the first, just about the first thing he did was pull an oblique, and he was lost for a month. Well, he was having some problems prior to that, too. So. It's just the fact that Kansas City, in my opinion, just did not play up to their potential. As Billy can't get it. And the count one and two. In fact, the Tigers with the fourth worst bullpen in the major leagues. And probably to them it seemed even worse than that. Yeah. Yeah. When your closer's ERA is a little above five. You got some problems. Had him off balance out in front. Two down. Third strikeout for Kentucky. Well, he's learned to change speeds on the breaking ball. First year or so, you very rarely saw any of that. You didn't see him pitch away to right handers very much. You didn't see that slow curve hardly at all. You saw cutters and fastballs mostly inside. And then with the help of Don Cooper and maturity. Now he's become one of the league's best although you'd never know it by looking at his record. That's why numbers in baseball can be so misleading. But talk to GM's and opposing players. About Quintana and they will tell you. They would absolutely be delighted to have him in the top three in their rotation, depending on the ball club. But he'd be up there. One of the best exhibitions, if you miss that game in Detroit, was game number one. Chris Bassett. One of the best exhibitions of changing speeds on your breaking stuff. That was it. That was absolutely for a youngster. That was a remarkable performance. Unreal.
Chris had a whole lot of his family in the stands that night. There's a strike in the count two and one. Hitters hate to have pitchers change speeds on the breaking stuff. It's bad enough with a fastball. Not on the breaking stuff. They don't like that. That's low three and one. Salvador Perez on deck. So the leadoff double goes for naught. We go to the bottom of the inning, leading two to one. Hispanic Heritage Night at Post Game Fireworks presented by Miller Lite. It's not just a good time, it's Miller time. Miller Lite, official beer of your Chicago White Sox. Purchase tickets today by visiting whitesox.com slash NHH or 866 Sox game. And there's the paw. Boy, the folks certainly love him. Dressed in his fashionable green. Goes with his green fur very well. And of course, another big night in baseball this evening. And the Bronx. Final game for Derek Jeter at home in pinstripes. Moises hitting for obviously Eel. Who had to leave with a sore lower back? Oh, we certainly hope it was. That's the extent of it. Yep. One of the icons of baseball. One of the greatest ambassadors this game's ever seen. I watched his first at bat tonight, and after going three and zero. Oh, Took a strike with Gardner at first base running. It went off the left field wall. Fans went crazy. Gardner scored. He drove in another run. And in his last game, his first at bat almost, I mean, almost went out of the ball. From Pretty exciting. He's always been in the moment. Yep. Not many players can say that. You know, when you think about guys who that ball hit in the left center field and nobody's going to get it. So. Moise is now pulling up a little gimpy out there. He looked like he got hurt coming around first base. Yeah, we talked about him. Don't count him out. This guy has got some talent. 
That was really not the way you wanted to write your footwork around first base. You would just as soon. Because he had some time he's gonna make the second easily you'd want to hit the bag with that. Right foot. Coming around and cutting it and making the play easily but. He's talking about that mid step. And the bad footwork around first so hopefully he is okay. He is. He is just a delight. He is full of energy. In that. Clubhouse in the dugout. And he can play. Now he's another guy. So to speak like a Moustakis. Got to get his head cleared up because. This guy is a five tool player. Now he's got some pretty big power and. The arm strength is not questioned. He's got to get a little more accurate with it, but. He just overpowers the baseball. I mean, we've seen some throws this year that have been remarkable from him. And look, he's going to be in the mix next year. It's going to be a real interesting winter for Rick Hahn and all of his scouts to see what they do with the money that they have allocated, which is pretty substantial. And then we'll see if a lot of the holes coming forward into next season can be filled in the wintertime. Well, we're like every other team. There's not. One team that you can say doesn't have holes. We're like everybody else. Well, if he, if Rick can even come close to doing what he did last well, one. But we, we're not going to have the free agent losses that the Tigers are going to have. Most likely, they're going to have both Scherzer and Victor Martinez gone. Well, we talked about it earlier. I am really looking forward to spring training next year. It's going to be fun. You're going to see some competition going out there. Somebody, somebody's going to have to play their behind off to get Carlos Sanchez off second base because that little guy can play. It will be an open curtain call, though. There's going to be a lot of comp more competition at that position probably than any other position on the it's field. It's going to be fun to watch. Yeah. It's going to be fun to watch. Be interested to see Carlos Rodon. Number one pick this year, left hander. And see what they want to do with him. The arm is there. Question of the experience. Obviously, he doesn't have that. He can't possibly. He was the number one draft pick this year. But the talent, without question, there. Walked and scored back in the second. Yeah, a two two count here. And he'll get the job done. That's where the base hit. Now he's going to wave him around. Aoki, he cannot throw. And backs in the second. And the Sox lead it three to one. Good job by McEwen, knowing the kind of the situation. Bad throw by him. Well, a bad throw because Jordan Danks read the angle of the throw, and when he saw that it couldn't possibly be cut off, he had to take off, put the pressure on Perez, and he juggled the baseball. So Jordan drives in his tenth run. He's trying to pull the ball, and it turns into gold. Eases it by Infante. And Aoki comes in with a rainbow home. Not be, nobody can do anything with that. And Perez drops it. Trying to cut down Danks at second. Well, those are plays right there when you're trying to get to postseason play that should not be made. Now keep the double play in order and you don't have a real strong arm. Don't try to airmail it there. Tank struck out on a fastball his first trip.
breaking ball. And the count one and two. Detroit leading Minnesota 3 2, top of the seventh at Comerica Park. And it'll bring up Josh Fegley. And here's what he did with two out, one on in the second. He had a fastball and shields as soon as it left his hands. And he saw where that ball was going. He had a pretty good idea that nothing good was going to come of it. He just dropped his head and asked for another one. And the count one and oh. Three five and oh for us, one four and oh for them. And well, we have a moment. We send a big White Sox hello to Jerry Rippa. Rippa, Hartsfield Village in Munster, Indiana, 89 years young. First White Sox game was June 1st, 1937. He saw Bill Bullfrog Dietrich no hit the St. Louis Browns. I remember the Bullfrog. He could do it. He had a good spitter. And Jerry Ripple was 12 years old. Ooh, he just missed that one. High into left field. So a big shout out to Jerry. Difference in that one and the one before. One before was a fastball. That one was a straight change, and he had him just out in front of him. Pick him up, Marcus. Marcus tripled following Fegley's two run homer into right center field. Did not check it up. And he's in the big hole, nothing in two. So Jordan Moses on in the third on the wild pitch. Twelfth wild pitch of the year for Shields. Donald Ventura, he has 11 of them. That's a change. Perez can't smother it.
And a big run is 90 feet away. This is where you like to really make that throw hurt. And it looks like it could happen. Dead gum it just fouled. Rob Drake on the call is that one sliced into the corner. There was no way Aoki could get close to it. But unfortunately, just on the other side of the line. We'll take a look. And as you can see, probably six, eight inches foul. And there's ball four. So a good at bat by Marcus. Second walk issue. By Shields, the first one scored. Nice at bat. Seven pitch at bat. Spo spoiling a few good ones before taking a walk from a guy that doesn't walk many people. Well, speak softly but carry a big bat. Or in the case of Ron, speak a lot and carry a huge bat. Yeah, I don't think you're going to be bunting too much, big guy. Well, if there's anybody strong enough to swing that bat, <laughs> you're looking <laughs> at him. I don't. Not many, not many sacrifices, though. I don't think. He's one of the strongest guys to play this game. Oh, and one to count. Adam. This year against the Royals, Adam Eaton has been exceptional. Let's see if he can add to that. Well, we have really played pretty good baseball against Kansas City, except for the bullpen. That's the reason they're 10 and 5. <laughs> it's usually a problem. Alfield very short. Aoki about normal out there, but that's I am wide two and two. Gordon and Kane, real short. Got him, but we come up with one, and we'll go to the fifth leading 3 1.
more runs. You get 50% off your entire online order at PapaJohns.com with the promo code SOX5 the following day. And that is at participating Papa John's location. So better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Lower third of their order, Perez, Infante, and Mustakas. center field can't get it no. so he's going his way to third and this will be his second triple of the season the Sierra put up his glove as if either one he was trying to convince him he's going to make the catch or two he lost the ball puts up his glove and looks like he lost it in the lights I don't think there's any doubt about it by the time he did get over there, he couldn't get to it. So not a particularly good way to start off the fifth. Joe McEwing is waving the infield back. Stay out of the beginning, give up the run. Trade the run for the out if you can get the ground ball. And Fonte grounded out to Alexei. Takes first pitch strike. What a beautiful day in the city of beautiful. Wow. It's supposed to be that way tomorrow. Saturday and Sunday. And then into next week. 0-2 the count. Infante has seven sacrifice flies this year. To go along with his five sacrifice bunts. He's driven in 66 runs. And this is a man who knows how to play the game. He was an excellent pickup. And for the most part, Dayton Moore has done his job. Put together a good, solid ball club. Built an unbelievable bullpen. Two and two. Strike out for Quintana. But he doesn't strike out a lot. 65th. 519 at bats. Let's see if he can get by Mustakas. Well, I'll give you a good analogy, a good example, and comparison to what we were talking about with Mustakas. He's got to get his head cleared out. Breaking ball strike. Look at JD Martinez. Yes. Somebody cleared his head out for him. Well, they did by releasing him. That'll, that'll. When you get released, that'll clear your head out. When he went to Toledo, somebody cleared his head. Out. I got a feeling it was probably Larry Parrish. And he started hitting those home runs down there. He hadn't stopped when they brought him up. They brought him up. April 21st. But they knew the talent was there. Fouls that one down.
Shift is on. Got him breaking ball. He go. Two down. Got to get by another tough man in Escobar, but if Jose can get out of this inning and keep that man at third base without scoring, it'll be a remarkable job and a good play by Josh Fegley. He goes down, keeps the elbows in. That's perfect technique. You keep the elbows in, you angle your body forward, you don't try to catch it, so when it hits in the middle of your chest protector, it rolls in front of you. Nice job. Escobar has struck out and hit into a 1 6 3 double play. On the pitch tracks. This ball is on the outside corner, but the break wasn't sharp. And Escobar drives in his 51st run of the year. And that a huge run. Kansas City comes up empty after a leadoff trickle, triple. Emotionally, this is not a good inning for them. Now they're feeling pretty good about themselves. Aoki fly to center and popped up to right. And there's that magic one again. Go to second base. He gone. That was one horrible base running play, and it got the Sox out of the inning with the lead. Well, they might review this one. And now he's going to check. If.
terrible, terrible base running play by you. And a great play. That's a picture book play on hitting the cutoff man and a terrific heads up play by Alexa. We're going to take a look at when we see it. The slide by Aoki. It was a, a bad thought process, but the slide was slide allowed him never to make it. And that the front foot never went at the bag. The front foot went to the outfield side a second, leaving the back foot to try to tag the bag, meaning you got to go another two feet and you allow the man to tag you, which is what happened. It's just a bad play all the way around. Yeah. But there's a strike in the count three and one. Now, Alexi rolled the dice on it. There's no question about that. But he and a good. As there is a shot it's going to hang up for Kane. So that's a hang with him. Here's our Xfinity high speed action replay. And Aoki takes it down the line, which is something we're used to. Throw comes into Alexi, who turns around, fires to second. And this slide, with that front foot going to the outfield side of second, forcing the back foot to be the one that ostensibly is going to get to the bag first. You got very little chance of getting there. And Aoki knows he made a mistake. And it could be a very costly one. Well, it cost him a run because if he gets in there safely, Escobar scores. He was coming home. I don't know if they could get him. But he, he was going to put the pressure on him. They would. Marcus wouldn't even have a throw home. Ray, you want for two. Count evens at one. Sliding is an art that's kind of gone by the boards with a lot of head first dives, but that front foot goes to the outfield side, and you see he's trying to tag it with his back foot. And he do that one over again. You either slide on the other side, or you slide with the front foot to the back. Two down. Here's Gillespie. He's gone out to center and then went out one, four, three. Two tomorrow night. Make your plans to be with us. Back to Noesi against Jeremy Guthrie. If you can't, that game will be over. WCIU. Paul Kinnerk today on Saturday. There is a softly hit ground ball. And that is a 1 2 training. So we have completed five and we lead it by one.
anything less than 100% just is not good enough. And that's why Camarena only offers award winning 100% blue agave tequila. And with six generations of tequila excellence infused into every bottle, Camarena is always smooth and never harsh. Camarena tequila, the official tequila of your Chicago White Sox. Top of the sixth, Kane, Hosmer, Butler. 3 5 and 0 for us, 2 7 and 0 for them. Detroit now leading Minnesota 4 2, bottom of the eighth in Detroit. Kane doubled and scored in the first. He doubled, leading off the fourth, then Quintana left him right there. Here's Hosmer, RBI single in the first. And hit a little soft looper into center field. That was for an out. Makes that breaking ball strike. Bottom of the eighth in the Bronx, Yankees leading Baltimore 5-2. Pittsburgh leading Atlanta 6 0, top of the eighth down in Georgia. And we got ourselves a 2 2 top. A check that 3 3 top. Ninth home run for Hosmer. Second run batted in tonight. 58th overall. And this rolling breaking ball stays over the inner portion, our forward home run replay. Osmer just goes down and gets it. So here's Butler hits the ball hard to third, his first at bat, and then struck out in the fourth. And that ball into right center field. Two down. <laughs> Left fielder Alex Gordon who struck out and also grounded out to second. Looks like allowing the bullpen to start to get loose. Dave Island on the phone. Well, they can cover nine ounces just about as well as anybody. And certainly better than most. What a bullpen that is. So with James Shields right at 100 pitches, they are going to start to stir. And a very talented Kansas City pen. Yes, foul. Cincinnati beat Milwaukee 5 3 at the Great American Ballpark. As we told you earlier, Seattle beat Toronto 7 5 up at the Rogers Center. That was a bullet. The 
last three left handers have hit the ball very hard against Quintana. As this one rifled by his left shoulder, fortunately, it was wide of him. Because I'm not sure on the throwing arm side if he could have gotten the glove across in time. Here's Perez. He tripled, leading off last inning and scored. Bottom of the six of Texas. Oakland and Rangers tied at one. Frazier and Downs. Both former Sox pitchers. The race that there is a great deal of interest in. St. Louis looked to have it well in hand, but Pittsburgh. Has decided they just don't want to lose a whole lot. If they win tonight, they'll have won nine of their last 11. Only one back in the loss column to the Cardinals. Take a look at it, and you can see the Brewers have been eliminated, but the Pirates, anything but. They already clinched the playoff spot. Now they're trying to run down the Cardinals. Gets away, but he's gone. Home run by Hosmer. We'll go to the bottom of the six, tied at three. The things you love. So visit athletico.com and start defining your pain free inner athlete today. Athletico, the official physical therapy provider of our White Sox. Athletico, better for everybody.
And with Shields perhaps tiring a bit, be nice to unknot this 3 3 game. Moise has been in the plate one time. He doubled and he scored. One ball, one strike. Right side playable for Hosmer. <laughs> so here's Jordan. He walked and scored in the second, and he singled in a run in the fourth. Washington Mets won game one, seven to four. Washington leading three nothing, top of the ninth. In the night count, because that's out of play left side. Boston thumping Tampa Bay, 11 to one, bottom of the seventh of Fenway. Around that one, chops it foul. So Jordan with a one two count. Test on this in Kansas City. James Shields' mom, Cindy. As he gets him, two gone. James Shields' mom, Cindy, and Aaron Rowan's mom, Connie, are sisters. Aaron and James both for number 33. So here's Tank, strikeout, and a ground out to third. One that breaking ball missing. But we mentioned Noesi against Guthrie tomorrow on Saturday on Paul Canerco Day, probably the last game he will ever play in a White Sox uniform. Johnny Danks, who's really been pitching well against Danny Duffy, tough left hander. There's a look at Johnny Danks. Fair ball, Stockus with the peg. And that's a one, two, three inning. So we're through six, tied at three.
will be airing one of our favorite moments of the past 10 years. The 2010 Blackhawks Stanley Cup clincher. Relive the thrill. Patrick Kane's game winning goal and enjoy special 10 spot fun facts throughout the broadcast. Remember next Thursday at 7 p.m. right here on CSN. It'll be Infante Mustakas and then back to the top of the order with Alcides Escobar. There's a couple of stories out of Minnesota that are really interesting revolving around Phil Hughes. One of them is that he won 16 games, 16 and 10 for a team that's in last place. He also walked 16 guys all year. He had over 11 and a half strikeouts to walk ratio. That is the most in baseball history. It was a remarkable year. And he fell one out short of $500,000 bonus. Team offered to pay him or run him out there one more time. And he said he didn't feel right. He will turn it down because they're not in a playoff hunt. That is most unusual. And so is the year of Phil Hughes, which has been absolutely remarkable. Now for three. The only response I can give you to that, it must be nice. Well, we're I, and obviously we're not. Minnesota, if he decides to turn that down and make a donation in his favorite charity's name for the 500000 they were willing to give it to him if he doesn't want it because of principle. Give it to a charity who could really use it. Because he did get rained out of one inning that he could have pitched, which would have given him one more out, which is what he needed to get that bonus. But 16 walks and 16 wins in the same year. Nice pick. Mustaka's now one for three. It has been fun watching Jose Abreu play this year. Certainly with wood and also with a leather. Kansas City doesn't have to be told that Detroit beat Minnesota 4 to 2. Joe Nathan nailing it down in a save his 34th of the year. Scherzer winning his 18th. Escobar with a big hit, two out single. It was a momentum changer. That has popped up. Simeon. And that is a quick one, two, three inning, seventh inning stretch. Go tight at three.
69 time. He's three and three. His ERA 146. Now we touched him up a bit in Kansas City after he walked a couple. So he's in relief of Shields. Jose Quintana, seven innings. Nine hits, three earned runs, no walks, and a strikeout. He reached 200 innings for the second year in a row. Most under the radar pitcher in the American League. By far. If you watch him day in and day out and see what he's done this year, only to see him once again pile up no decision after no decision. It's astonishing. Well, coming to the ballpark today. As Fegley stands in, he has a two run homer and then he just missed another one. I was really anxious because of the fact I knew we were going to see two good pitchers. I love to watch James Shields pitch. Yeah, I mean, he one. is. He's one of those guys could have pitched in any era. And of course, I love to watch Quintana. Three nine and zero for them. Three five and zero for us. And still with a chance. To get Quintana a win. He'd love to see that record move to ten and ten before this season is over. Al feels slightly to the right. Of course, with that home run by. Bagley in the second inning. The Alex Nellius family and White Sox charities will hook up once again in loving memory of Ursula. And that's going to fall in there for a base hit. So the leadoff single. This ball is inside off the plate. And he's able to get just enough of it to drop it in front of Gordon. So there's a go ahead run. Marcus has tripled and he has walked. Picked up his second triple of the season. Following Begley's two run homer. There's the punt. He just looks. Did he have his phone? I guess he did. So the sacrifice, 3 4. Hosmer was absolutely dying to go to second base. But Fegley, with pretty decent speed, and one thing Eric didn't want to do is open the door to a big inning. Well, Hosmer, there's not a more aggressive first baseman in the American League than he is. In fact, he might be the most aggressive first baseman since I've seen Jeff Bagwell. I used to love to watch Bagwell hit. And I used to love to watch him play first base. And that star for the Houston Astros is one of the few guys whose front foot when he hit actually stepped backwards before he made contact. You very rarely have ever seen that. No. Well, you're going to have such tremendous strength in your hands. And I'll never, the play I'll always remember, or the thing I'll always remember about Jeff Backwell in the game here a couple of years ago, a few years ago when he was here. But situation. Left handed hitter. Fouled it over by the. On the. Infield circle. And he made the catch. Third base side. Foul territory. With the fastball. Of Herrera. Adam gets a base hit to left field unless it's down the line or in the gap. That can be able to score on Alex Gordon. He's too shallow. That fastball at 100.
Broken back. Escobar. Nice shift. Well, that, nice shift by Hosmer. That one almost got Adam Eaton in the head. And he's asking Rob Drake, are you sure? Rob Drake is saying, yep. This throw is off the mark. Escobar has to really gun it across. He's got a big arm. All right, here comes Robin. He wants to take a look at that back foot. Doesn't appear that the foot was on the bag no. when he made the catch. No. And I think Adam told Robin that. And once again, here in the seventh inning. That's a big play. You got it's a huge play, and you've got nothing to lose by having him review it. His foot is absolutely off the bat. When you take a look at that, now the ball's in the glove. And his foot is off the back. And let's hope that that is definitive proof in New York. Because it looks like it's definitive proof here. When you see where the ball is and watch that back foot, that back foot is a good inch off the first base back. Watch where the ball is. When it hits the glove, his foot is clearly off the bat. single meanwhile the most important thing two on one out and here's Alexa he is grounded to second grounded to first and line very hard to center He's faced uh, 14 times, has four hits. That fastball at 99. Derek Jeter giving his final waves in the final game he will play at Yankee Stadium.
That ball in the left field. Here comes Gordon. He's going to make the catch. He would have made that one standing up, but it looked like he took a slide to get the ball out of the lights. That's what good corner outfielders do. Comes in. And Josh Fragley, there's nothing you can do there except get down about a third of the way, see if it falls. Here's Jose Abreu, one for three, had a first inning single in the hole between third and short. Fastball at 98. Hit hard, but fine. They scored a run in the first. We scored two on a two run homer by Fagley in the second. We had another in the fourth. They scored one in the fifth and one in the sixth. One in the sixth, home run by Hosmer. Good rip. That one at 100. So he's seen a 98, 99, and 100. This one almost down the middle. But Jose could not get on top of it. Got him, so we have a mild threat. Cannot score. And we're into the eight tied at three.
Brought to you by AT&T. Do you want to hear some divine intervention? Absolutely. Baltimore ties it up in the top of the ninth. In the bottom of the ninth, man gets on. They bunt him over, and Derek Jeter knocks him in for the winning run. And the final at bat, final game, Yankee Stadium. That's his third run batted in of the game. Three out of six. But it what was a, meant to be. What a flair for their dramatic. Unbelievable. Script written by the big guy. Jeez. Well, he left him something to remember him by. As if he didn't give him enough to remember him by to begin with. 20 years? Yeah. So here is Aoki. My memory always will be of Derek Jeter the first time I saw him hit at Yankee Stadium against us. I think it was Frank Bertotti. Left hand. He comes to the plate, bottom of the first. First pitch was right behind his head. He goes down, he just gets up, he looks at Bertotti for four or five seconds. The next pitch, he hit a rocket right back through the middle. I looked at Wimpy and I said, Wimpy, we might be seeing something special here. Well, it certainly worked out that way. Many years later. He gone. One out. Sirkip and Patrichka. <laughs> And hopefully they're going to give Jose a chance, every chance, to get out of this inning and give him another opportunity to even his record at 10 and 10. Kane is two for three, two doubles and a run score. Tops that breaking ball foul. What a script. One ball, one strike. Scored three in the top of the ninth and tied at five. Solid single to center. So good speed aboard. He's 27 for 32. Takes that fastball right back through the middle. They got one of their speed burners on. And Hosmer's had a couple of very good swings at Jose tonight. It's in the sixth. A rolling breaking ball ties it at three. And that's where we stand. Breaking ball strike. I'm not sure exactly how this happens, but Hosmer 
Second in the league in road batting average. That one could have gone either way. And Jose's way. Husser's batting average. 327 on the road this year. Only Victor Martinez on the road has been better. There's a bullet. The runners at the corners with one out. Robin. Billy Butler will be the hitter. That fastball on the outer third. And the second time where Hosmer's hit the ball in the same spot. So that's going to be it. And the best that Jose can hope for this evening is a no decision. Well, at least Robin gave him the opportunity. And Jake Petrichka going to come in the ball game. So Jose Quintana is going to get a great hand from a very appreciative. U.S. Cellular Field crowd. Standing ovation. And well deserved for the young man. We'll step out and be back after these messages. One and six is ERA 288 out for the 66th time. 72 innings, giving up 65 hits. He inherits some problems. Runs the first and third, only one out. He does have, however, a man who will hit into a lot of double plays, 20 of them to be exact. But Billy Butler has been one of the hottest of all the Royals over the last week. Here's another double play. And throw. Run scores. They lead it 4 3. Well, a microcosm of the year that not only the Sox have had, but Jose Quintana has had. That scores a go ahead run on what should have been a very easy double play. Alex Gordon will be the hit. I would think after the last two years that Jose somewhat, somewhat is getting used to it. That one's pretty hard to get used to. Terrence Gore comes on and he is a lot like Jared Dyson in that both of these guys can really fly.
He's three for three in stolen bases. There's another inequity in the scoring system. Goes as an earned run. And the idea is you can't anticipate a double play, but you actually can anticipate sure you can. a double play. I mean, that, you know, if you're going to have, they've changed it to where the official scores have a little more leeway now than they have in the past. They just got to take it one step further. There's no question on that play. Yep. yep. Go. Goes high. He's four for four. Well, they haven't yet seen the match race, nor are they likely to between Gore and Dyson, but it would be awfully close. Take Dyson, you take Billy Hamilton, you take our Micah Johnson. Make them tag team. <laughs> yeah, a relay. Four by 100 relay. You got a pretty good team there. Gotta believe it. Soon, soon that Mike is healthy, you got four guys who can really go get him. Two, two. And there's a base hit. Of course, a five three lead. Another earned run. Moore can really go get him. Twelve and zero for them. Three seven and zero for us. Salvador is one for three, a triple. That was leading off the fifth inning, and he scored a big two-out hit by Alcides Escobar. And there's a fisted base hit in the center field. Fonte is 0 for 3, a couple of ground outs and a strikeout. They come up with two and they lead it 5 3.
And we've got a new pitcher in the ball game. And it is Wade Davis. On for the 70th time. What a year he's had. Nine and two. ERA point nine zero. 104 strikeouts. 70 innings. And just 23 walks. Right handers. Might as well go home. You're hitting 101 against him. Well, here's Gillespie. 0 for 3. Lorenzo Kane shifts from center to right. As Jared Dyson comes into play center. Five thirteen and zero for them. Three seven and zero. Oh, we have up on the board for us. For the second year in a row, Kansas City has taken a less than overwhelming start. Wade Davis was 8 and 11 last year, 24 starts, 31 appearances, and they've made him into an overwhelming pensman. Year before it was Luke Hochaver, who they moved out of the rotation into the pen, getting the ERA below two. This year, Wade Davis, who was fit into that pen. And just had a magnificent season. Baseball always has a lot of nice stories every year, and this is one of them. Well, you take you take a guy that has been a starting pitcher. You know, he's had some success. He was with Tampa Bay. He was pretty decent. 12 and 10. 11 and 10. But with a big arm. And now you put him in the pen, you pitch him only one inning, and the arm gets a whole lot bigger. One out. <laughs> Stories like Davis, like JD Martinez. Stories like Derek Jeter knocking in three runs, a walk off RBI, and finally. I was going to say, that, that I'm not sure you can compare with anything else, but Zach Britton from Baltimore is a great story. Take another starter, move him as a closer into the pen. Now he's got a 96 mile an hour sinker. And he's one of the huge reasons why that team is going to wind up in postseason play. Oh, yeah. It's yes, very seldom you're going to see a team. Win that many games without a lockdown close. Nope. And he was a guy that was really struggling as a starter. Well, it, it just takes a lot of stones for the general manager and the manager to make that move. It's like it took in 05. We had Shingo Takatsu start off as our closer. He wasn't getting it done. Dustin Hermanson comes in, picks up 34 quick saves for us, goes down with a bad back. And then it took a lot of stones for Kenny Williams and Ozzy to bring in a kid, a rookie from Double A, to close it out for you. And close it out, he did. He will always have a heart, a place in all the hearts of Sox fans. Bobby James. How many times are you going to see a team win a World Championship with three closers in one year? I'm not sure you're going to see it again. And the last time you'll ever see probably four consecutive complete games and only six pitches away from being five consecutive complete games. Two down. Kansas City believes that Wade Davis will be a closer. But you got to serve an apprenticeship. Especially when you got Greg Holland sitting there with 44 saves and a 149 ERA. With Herrera, Davis, and Holland, you get the lead late. You don't give it up too often. Gordon hits that ball sharply, jumps up and bites Infante.
Jordan now one for three is that's an error on Infante. That is his 11. Let's give him a finish. Make him pay. Here's Tank. Strikeout and two ground outs to Mustakas. One of them very hard. He gets two for ten lifetime off of the big right hander. Noessi against Guthrie. Tomorrow night. Make your plans to be with us here at the park. If you can't, that game will be over. Don't you see on you. The base hit. Let's keep it going, boys. As here comes Josh. Get the tying runs on. That's a hard slider down. Tank goes down and gets it. Easing it by Escobar in the left field. So we'll see if the air does indeed open the door. Two run homer, a long two run homer in the second inning. Then he just missed hitting another one in the fourth. High towering, driving to left field. And he just muscled a single into left field. Leading off last inning. High end to right field. Kane makes a catch. So we have another mile threat. Can't do anything with it. We're into the night. Trailing 5 3. Guthrie against Noesse, Duffy against Danks, Ventura against Bassett on Sunday for the finale. 
And you see the late start, Saturday's game, due to the ceremony honoring Paul Canerco in his 16 years in a White Sox uniform. Eric Surkamp comes into the ball game with 2-0, the ERA 532 on for the 33rd time. Things going well for him lately. And he's got to hold it right there to two-run deficit. Sox going to have a hard enough time with two runs against Greg Holland. Mustakas then back to top of the order with Escobar and Dyson. And once again, my two partners tonight to pick to click Mike Leary and Dave Ross, two of the best producers I've ever worked with in all my years of broadcasting, almost 40. This is their last game of the season with us, and I just want to thank them both for another extraordinary job. An extraordinary job. They also produce for the Blackhawks, and that's one reason you see great production in our telecast and great production in Blackhawks telecast. And I want to thank them. The man Joe and the crew and everybody. The Mayor Mean Joe Grew. It's just good to be around good people. We got a man there, right? Almost in his tracks. Here's Escobar, one for four, but it was a biggie, a two out single in the fifth. Looked like we were going to get out of that inning after Perez let it off with a triple. Montana struck out Infante and Mustakas. But then he lined up. Solid single to right. Takes ball one. Count evens. Now, getting his first at bat of the night, Jared Dyson came on to pinch run. Dyson came in to play center field defensively. And what started out a little shaky for Eric Surkamp. Coming up from the minor leagues. Has turned into a pretty impressive job over the last month or so. Well, since his recall, he's put himself right back in the mix. For an organization not exactly loaded with left handers. <laughs> One of the organizations <laughs> that are short on yeah. left handers. That's why it's going to be interesting to see the decision on Carlos Rodon. One and one to count. Our guy Simeon. Eaton. And Alexa. In the ninth. A few more.
Three and one. I mentioned that Saturday might be the last time he plays. It might be Sunday now. Stand. That might be his last game. Make your plans to be with us. Speed at first. One of the things Robin knows is if he goes to Belisario, Dyson is going automatically. Not that he won't go with Sir Camp, but it'll be a little more difficult. But he's got a gigantic lead at first. Yeah, he's one of the best. And biggest lead takers in his league. Athletics who have absolutely fallen off the map lose to Texas two to one. They'll get into postseason, but they'll go in limping. The All Star break, they had the best record in baseball. Right now they're looking at still a good year, 86 and 73. But it's been probably the worst record in baseball over the last six weeks or so. One and one to count with two down here in the top of the ninth. Five, thirteen, and one for the Royals. Three, eight, and zero oh for us in the last four games of the season. The Athletics, seventy-three losses. The Mariners. 75 losses will be awfully tough for Cleveland. With well, the Mariners, you never know. Ball gets away from Fegley. That's a pass ball. That ball was in the strike zone and That double and run scored in the first. He doubled, leading off the fourth. Could not score there. Got into the third and in last inning, single, and scored. 
hitting at 3 0 3. And now make it four hits. Another run will score. And a six three. So the walk comes around. Walk in the pass ball. And Kane having a big night. Five four hit nights. And Lorenzo Kane. Like everybody in the 290s battling to stay over 300. Hosmer, that RBI single, a homer, and another single. Takes a breaking pitch for a strike. Josh Willingham get his opportunity. If Hosmer can keep it alive. Now the breaking ball close, but didn't quite get back. Go. And that is fouled away. So one and two. Hit right at Jordan Dankson left, and that will retire the side. But they pick up another gift run. And we'll go to the bottom line, trailing by three. By Miller Light, and it's the double play that wasn't. Billy Butler get into what looked like a double play to end the inning, but the low throw by Marcus Simeon. And the Royals went on to score two. They now have a three run lead, and they hand it over to their closer, Greg Holland, on for the 64th time. 44 of 46 in save opportunities. 
But another remarkable year out of the pen in what has been pretty much a lockdown bullpen. Last year was the best bullpen in baseball, and this year certainly one of the top two or three. 44 46 is. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's Mariano Rivera like. But when you look at this stuff, you can understand why he would be very hard to deal with. And he's not an overwhelmingly big guy. No, he's not. In stature. Oh, but a big arm. A very big and arm. He's got some stones, too. Really good rip. He is perfect on the evening. A triple, a walk, and a sacrifice. But Holland is 5'10, 200 pounds. Last year, 121 ERA and 47 saves. Yikes. Six fourteen and one for them. Three eight and Got a zero up there, but as I say, numbers in baseball can be very misleading. Takes that up high. Adam Eaton looks like he is coming up a little lame, maybe on that swing. Could very well be that he tweaked the knee that had been giving him some problems. This doesn't look great. Here's Alexi. Souvenir right side. Cattle went two. He's four for 15 against Holland. Where do you take a rare? You take Wade Davis. You take Holland. There's no secrets. Oh, here it is. You hit it. I'm throwing real hard. You see if you can hit it. That's it. Well, Herrera did throw a change to get a Brayu in the seventh. Yes, he did. That's one of the rare ones. And that's out number two. Well, that philosophy has worked for about 130 
year. Here it is. See if you can yeah, see what you can do with it. And here's Abreu, one for four, had that first inning single. And they come to their feet as this ball game is over. So they take the first. We helped them out like we have done so often this year, especially against Kansas City. We've given them a lot of games. They win it six to three. And once again, Quintana. He gets uh, he gets a tough luck loss, and unfortunately, it's been a continuing lament this year. He threw well enough to win, just didn't, and. We gift wrap to this one for Kansas City, and I'm sure they're very appreciative. All right, let's check out our GMC professional grade players of the game. So Kane and Eric Hosmer are GMC professional grade players of the game. So from my partner Steve Stone, our director Jim Angio, and thanks again to our producer and our associate producer Mike Leary and Dave Ross, also our technical manager Mark Harper, the mayor Mean Joe Groove, and the executive producer Jim Corno Jr. And for Mike Mayer, Frank Model, Dennis Wood, Doug Bullard. This is the Hawk. So long, everybody. Coming up next, Subaru Post Game Live with Chuck and Bill. You've been watching White Sox Baseball on Comcast Sports.